One thing every developer has in common is their constant dependence on developer education. Effective technical content can be leveraged in a bunch of ways. Maybe you work in open source and want to bring more attention to your project, or you are scaling your SaaS, want to excel in developer relations, or you want to create your own content and form a personal brand in tech, or you simply are seeking to feel unified as a team from engineering to marketing under a shared North Star. This course aims to present a system to help achieve those goals, and it all functions in a cycle where the pursuit of knowledge leads to mastery, where the learned become mentors of their community and advocate on your behalf if you've genuinely helped them in some way. This accelerates adoption by expanding a community of people sharing knowledge about your project. So let's uncover a methodology for how to produce effective technical content that can scale, allowing you to reach and teach developers. It all starts with respecting the people we're trying to reach. As developers, we're not only in charge of our daily tasks, but we're simultaneously navigating a seemingly endless flood of new tools, new toys, and some potential treasures to explore. But our time and attention are limited, and protecting our work-life balance means being selective with what we spend our time on. So in order to bring us into your world, you need to be respectful of our limited time and attention and help provide value to our lives. A recent study uncovered something we intuitively already know about ourselves as developers. When learning new tech, devs go through a four-stage journey. Exploration, search for resources and discover relevant documentation. Understanding, comprehending content to grasp concepts. Practice, applying knowledge in hands-on scenarios. Application, integrating learned skills into real-world projects. So how do we create a path for developers that supports them at every step of the learning journey? There's a lot to unpack here, but what helps me simplify things is Joseph Campbell's concept of the hero's journey. This classic storytelling pattern appears everywhere, from iconic films like Star Wars and Harry Potter to timeless literature such as The Hobbit. This is a universal storytelling pattern, where the hero of a story receives a call to adventure, leaves their comfort zone, faces challenges, but ultimately has a breakthrough and returns to where they started, transformed. And I've found that it really maps well onto how developers can be supported during their learning journey. Every hero's journey begins in their ordinary world. In The Lord of the Rings, that's Frodo in the Shire, unaware of the adventure awaiting him. Similarly, developers are using their familiar tools and routines, unaware of your existence. Then there's the call to adventure. Like Harry Potter receiving his Hogwarts letter, the developer encounters the potential magic of your project. But ultimately, they hesitate, refusing the call. For developers, this is the moment of doubt when we're unsure if your solution is worth our investment of time and effort. But along comes the mentor, a supportive guide, like Gandalf or Dumbledore, offering wisdom, tools, and support. And in my paradigm, an effective content strategy can play the mentor role for developers by providing tutorials, documentation, and the support that empowers them to take the next step with confidence. Eventually, the hero faces a choice. Do they stay in place? Or do they cross the threshold and leave the matrix? Do they move beyond uncertainty and fully commit to the path? From there, they enter the inmost cave, putting theory into practice, sharpening their sword and preparing for battle. Finally, their practice pays off as they reach a transformative breakthrough, able to apply their newfound mastery to solving major challenges in their life. Naturally, people share about the things that have helped bring more ease and productivity to their lives, so that's how we complete the circle when the developer returns to their community with the elixir, sharing what they've learned and advocating on your behalf. So with this mental model in place, I'd like to explore these steps in more detail and share some best practices that I've learned along the way, which I believe can be replicated to produce more engaging and effective developer education, no matter what your end goal is. So let's start at step one. Remember, for us developers, our ordinary world is often one filled with suboptimal workflows, productivity gaps, and a constant search for improvement. By empathizing with the needs of your user, you better understand their pain points and how you might be able to help. This enables you to meet them where they are and invite them into your world with the call to adventure, which needs to be a compelling invitation to explore a better way forward. But first, you have to get their attention. By creating content that addresses developers' pain points, you become the solution to their problem, the answers to their questions. The more immediate value that you provide to them up front, 
the more respect you gain from them. Developers trust their peers more than brands. This means you'll want to invest in building an authentic presence across platforms to form an organic community of developers who tell each other about you and what you offer. This can entail organizing events like webinars, live demos, hackathons, which allow developers to interact directly with your product and you or your team. Consider placing yourself in spaces where developers already spend time, like newsletters, podcasts, forums, YouTube, and other video platforms, and conferences. Regardless of how they receive your call to adventure, the goal here is to resonate deeply with their current struggles and clearly present a path worth exploring. Every classic hero hesitates before pursuing the path of adventure. So your job is to pave a yellow brick road that smooths away friction. As Eduardo San Martin Morote says, we fail when we create resistance and we succeed by producing ease. If your site fails to communicate why your product is worth developers' attention, this leads to resistance and hesitation. A problem I see often is when companies are so close to their product that they explain it in jargon that only those already in the note would understand. You may just be speaking Latin to your would-be users, so make your message clear. A strong call to action is a strong value proposition, clear enough that even a non-technical person could explain why your product is valuable. After all, they might be the one investigating whether what you offer is worth their team's time. Effective call to actions are crucial for paving a clear path forward. They represent literal calls to adventure in your hero's journey, so you'll need to map out the first steps you want users to take and be intentional with how you're guiding them forward. Whether it's watching an explainer video, starting a free trial, or exploring documentation, CTAs need to be unambiguous and relevant to the stage in the developer's journey. Maybe you don't want to send them straight into the depths of your docs before showing them an intro video. If your website is confusing and your docs are hard to follow, developers are more likely to abandon the journey before they even start. And the absence of video tutorials can further alienate those who prefer visual learning. Which brings us to the mentor. On every hero's journey, a mentor appears to guide and prepare them for the trials ahead, providing them with the support, resources, and perspective that fuels their transformation. And it's important to remember that content is not just a supplemental accessory to your product. Content is how you can mentor developers. It's the vehicle through which people engage and learn about you. A content strategy that mentors can help convert the curious into the convinced. The dabbler to the doer. If you have a website, that site is content. Done right, it can guide your user toward successful adoption. An explainer video can quickly communicate how your product can make a difference in developers' lives. In my experience creating explainer videos for open source projects such as for the Vue Docs and Bulma, we found that site visitors who watch such a video stay on the page longer, view more pages, and spend more time on the site overall. In other words, high quality content can make would-be users more engaged and more likely to pursue the path. And as we know, solid documentation is crucial for success. Your docs should be easy to navigate with a clear structure. Think of them as your hero's map, their survival guide, and their cookbook all in one. Ask yourself, what do they need to succeed? What am I packing in their survival kit? Offering a getting started tutorial is one of the best ways to make the learning journey more accessible and to accelerate adoption. While it may be tempting to just do a text-based tutorial, the majority of developers rely on video content when learning new technologies. And the younger the person is, the more true that is. But I get it. Creating high-quality video content can be intimidating. So what actually makes technical content effective? Effective content is engaging content. You'll want to start with clean code. Nail down the technical details you're teaching in a well-scoped, relatable example. Then, translate that into a written tutorial walking through the code step by step. The two biggest pitfalls here are making too many assumptions about what the learner already knows, which can leave them feeling lost, and only teaching how to do something but not why it's done that way. When someone understands the why, they can adapt their learning to other use cases. If all you're doing is repeat after me content, you are not truly empowering the learner. Once your written tutorial is nailed down, this can function as the script for your video, with the added benefit that you still get to publish it as text and gain those potential SEO benefits. When it comes to video content, it should go without saying that quality audio is crucial. If your video is hard to listen to, viewers will drop off fast. You'll also want it to be high resolution, 
with code and text big enough to be legible when viewed on a phone. It doesn't matter how you prefer your code editor to look. It's not about you. It's about easing the learning experience for your audience. Good quality audiovisual means you'll need some equipment, such as a quality microphone, as well as a camera and lighting setup if you want to be on screen. However, if you aren't able to invest in that, there are AI services that allow you to turn text into narration. And there are even digital avatars that can present your content. If you teach technology long enough, you'll learn that keeping content up to date is one of the hardest challenges. Incorporating AI into your production workflow helps ease this burden. Regardless of how you choose to present the content, you'll need to clearly demonstrate code, which entails creating well-structured screencasts that are concise, clean, and cut the fluff. As for some high-level editing basics, you'll want to clean up your recording so there's no distractions. You can cut out pauses, filler words, misspeak, distracting mouse movement, and you're left with a clean, minimal edit. Again, we are respecting their precious time and treating the attention they've given you with care. To ease the editing process, you can try out some tools that leverage AI to automate some editing work for you, such as Capwing and Jump Cutter, which offer free tiers. It's also critical for your audio and visual to constantly be in sync, so you may need to add or remove frames so your narration syncs up with your demonstration. What you show needs to match what you say. Please never publish a tutorial where you mess up, introduce a typo or something, and only correct the issue later in the video. It's better to start from scratch and re-record than to publish confusing content that takes your audience down unnecessary tangents. One of my favorite things about teaching with video is how we have the opportunity and responsibility to direct our viewers' attention in a way that facilitates learning. We can achieve this in multiple ways, such as with motion and outlines. Or, even better, we can tell them exactly where to look by narrowing focus and honing in on an isolated piece of code, we can also zoom in and out of what's important. Traditionally, I've used ScreenFlow to achieve these effects, but there are a few options you can use, including Camtasia or even Screen Studio, which uses AI and cursor tracking to automate some aspects of screencasting. You can make things even clearer by adding annotations to explain what you're showing. While this already improves code clarity, you can go the extra mile by animating theoretical concepts. The fundamentals for animation are pretty universal across programs. You may have explored them with animation libraries. I like to gather some icons that represent what I'm explaining and bring them to life with motion. While it can get complex, it can also stay simple because it boils down to each object having three states. How does it enter the screen? What actions, if any, does it perform once they're in frame? And how do they leave? By stacking these rules, adding delays and layers, you can get pretty far in visually demonstrating concepts in motion. When pushing this to the max, stacking build-in and action animations, you can achieve pretty complex results. Here's one of my favorite examples from years ago when I was teaching Vuex. This is all running in real time within Keynote. You might be thinking, but my brain doesn't naturally see concepts visually, so how do I even get started with this kind of thing? I guarantee you a quick combo with ChatGPT can help generate some solid ideas based off your content that you can then animate. I want to reiterate, not every animation has to be complex. You might just need to animate the bullet points of a list. You might be thinking, but Adam, why would I need to animate my list? Can't I just show it all at once? If I show all of my points at once, what happens is exactly what's happening right now. Some of you are reading ahead and there's a disconnect between what I'm saying and what you're reading. Instead, if I only show my points as I'm talking about them, I retain focus on what I'm saying. I keep my audience from wandering off alone because we're supposed to be in this together. Another common use case is to animate code to retain context, instead of going from one version of code to the other. We can retain context through leveraging things such as the Magic Move Slide animation in Apple Keynote, which helps smoothly rearrange objects from one slide to the next based on their positions on the first and second slide. Remember, it's all about holding focus and directing it with precision and care to facilitate learning. Speaking of facilitating learning, for the first time ever, we now have the opportunity to provide personalized support to our audience with custom chatbots powered by AI, trained on our product and its docs. Consider implementing a chatbot mentor. You can do this with something like Intercom, Zendesk, Command AI, or your own custom GPT with OpenAI. An example of a company making good use of this tactic is Render. 
As you can see, you can ask AI questions and it customizes the docs to your users' needs in real time. With all of this content-driven support, your hero gains the confidence to cross the threshold and dedicate the time to mastering the craft. They deepen their discovery as they approach their inmost cave and put concept into practice, preparing to defeat the boss. As they prepare for battle, they'll need troubleshooting and integration guides, advanced tutorials, cookbooks, and support from your team and community. This all culminates in the explorer finally becoming the hero of their story, reaching mastery over their challenges. Empowered and transformed, they've reached their potential and can now complete the circle and become the mentor. Because they've discovered the Holy Grail, attained the Master Sword, and returned to their community with the Elixir. Your hero becomes an advocate as they spread their newfound knowledge with their developer community. I hope me sharing a bit from my perspective helps you gain more clarity on how you can reach and teach developers in a way that helps you meet your goals while helping them meet theirs.